Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and distinguished panelists and delegates. Thank you for joining us today um, for this session. <clears throat> today, I'm going to be talking about prepping our flue gas streams for carbon capture. Before I get into the topic, just a little bit background about how many environmental systems. We were founded in 2022 with the objective of being a market leader in air quality control systems. We are headquartered in Chennai. So our business has really been cleaning up um, emissions from industrial boilers. So you've got uh, anywhere that you need air pollution control, whether it's from uh, a process boiler, a power boiler, thermal boiler, recovery systems, and in the refineries is where our core business has been. As you can imagine, with the changing energy mixture, um, we're looking at a very different marketplace going forward, and that's somewhat what we'd like to talk about today. <coughs> so Harmony acquired its AQS technology from Hamon Research Control India, which was a subsidiary of the Hamon Group headquartered in Belgium. Um, Research Control has been in India for about eight, uh, since the 1980s, initially under licenses from, uh, uh, through Voltas, ACCs, etc. But in 2011, they started up their own business here. Research Control globally has a long history in the oil and gas industry and the refining industry, uh, especially for the installation of ESPs in fabric filters and for the FCCU. And then since 2003, it's been the worldwide licensor for ExxonMobil's wet gas scrubbing technology and thermal denox technologies. <coughs> Industries that Harmony is involved in is uh, basically the cement, oil and gas, waste energy, pulp and paper, and metals and mining. In India, uh, metals, pulp and paper, and oil and gas are our three major uh, sources of business. In the oil and gas, we're currently working on two projects, supplying ESPs to refineries, um, and also on four engineering projects as engineering consultant. Most relevant to today's topic is our work for a, actual for an international customer for a project that they're impl that's being implemented in the United Kingdom, which involves installation of a carbon capture system downstream of an FCC, and where we are acting as process and design consultants is what is uh, getting the flue gas ready for entry into that carbon capture system. So in terms of ESP technologies, um, Harmony or Research Control has had a global uh, leadership in FCC ESPs, mainly through the Harmony E uh, high, uh, high Reliability ESP. This is a top wrapped ESP and it can achieve uh, campaigns or turnarounds of up to six years without a shutdown. So matching up our outages with the FCC turnaround time is what we're, that unit is basically designed for and therefore it has over a 95% market share on FCC refinery uh, ESPs worldwide. We also have two types of fabric filter technologies, both the low pressure and the medium pressure, not so relevant for the FCC, uh, for the refinery industry, but very common in pulp and paper as well as steel. And then the other control technologies that we participate in are various types of scrubbers, including the wet gas scrubber and wet FGD systems. So, to the topic at hand, just a reminder now, why is carbon capture important? It becomes important, basically the primary uh, driver is that the increasing concentration of greenhouse gases is increasing the temperature, ambient air temperature around the world. And through the Paris Accords and subsequent ratification at COP26, governments worldwide have decided, have agreed that limiting the warming to no more than 1.5 degrees above the industrial average, pre-industrial average is ideal, and limiting to less than two degrees above the pre-industrial average is absolutely essential. If you look at the graph there, um, on current trend, we're unlikely to meet that, so we really need uh, negative capture, we need to step up in terms of what we're doing in terms of uh, reduction and capture of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere in order to get to 1.5. Now, how does that affect refineries? 4% of global and about 15% of industrial carbon dioxide comes from refineries. Carbon dioxide in deplete uh, storage, as far as storage is concerned, refineries are a very suitable hub because they're already connected to natural gas pipelines for the most part, um, and wells, basaltic wells or saline aquifers for where the carbon dioxide, once it's captured, can be stored. So 
and thirdly, the refinery process is already in, uh, suited, especially when we talk about integrated refineries. The uh, production of petrochem products absorbs carbon dioxide from the process already. So refineries offer an ideal space for carbon capture to, uh, technology to be installed, and that pure carbon dioxide can either be stored, used for uh, enhanced oil recovery, or for petrochem production. Now, in a refinery, the amount of total CO2 a refinery produces can vary based on fuel or type of fuel. But typically about 60%, 65% comes from stationary sources, thermal sources, basically all your heating for process. And 23% um, comes from process in, uh, direct process, mainly your methane reformers and the FCC. 22% of that is from the FCC. And so the ways to decarbonize a typical refinery as reducing heat emissions, either through fuel switching or electrification or carbon capture from process emissions. Now the carbon capture from process emissions gives you the single biggest source, point source from the FCC. 22% of the carbon dioxide from uh, emissions from a refinery come from the FCC. So that gives you a single source. So I'm gonna focus on that piece for the next. Now capturing CO2 from a flu FCC flue gas, typically we use an amine based solvent uh, in the scrubbing process. Technology owners have also developed proprietary solvents unique to their process, but most solvents are amine based. Other technologies proposed for carbon capture are membrane separation, chemical looping, and some solid uh, metal ions as well. In the chemical solvent base, it's a two step process. Um, Initially, the flue gas is contacted with the solvent in, a, in an absorbing tower. There, the solvent reacts with the carbon dioxide, captures it, scrubs it out of the system, and all the other gases exit out through the stack. The carbon dioxide-rich sol solvent is now transferred to a regenerator or a stripping tower, where it's heated to about 120 degrees, which reverses the absorption process, releases carbon dioxide pure, carbon dioxide for downstream work, either for storage, for recovery of a petrochem production, and then the pure solvent is sent back to the absorber for this. Now this unit, this system, has been around since the 1970s. It was used mainly for sweetening natural gas, basically stripping out of, uh, contaminants from natural gas to improve the efficiency of natural gas burning. So it's a mature technology, it's ready for, for implementation, and in fact has been processing in various uh, pilot plants and projects uh, elsewhere. Now, if you look, talk to chemical uh, carbon capture providers, they typically have inlet gas specifications of SO2 less than one ppm dry, NOx not specified, but usually un, has to be under control, around 100 milligrams per liter, uh, per normal meter cubed. Particulate, less than five milligram per normal meter cubed. SO3, less than one. Minimize your carbon dioxide, uh, minimize carbon monoxide, maximize carbon dioxide so that you're maximizing your production, your capture. And most critically, aerosols have to be less than 350,000 per centimeter cubed, which is a very stringent uh, criteria. By comparison, if you look at stack emissions from FCCs today per the CPCV, you're looking at SO2 around 500, NOx 350, PM 50 uh, to 100. SO3 is not specified because it usually comes as, as SO2. And carbon monoxide is 400. So you can see there's a huge gap between what we are currently designing our equipment for and what was going to be required to send flue gas to a carbon capture system for storage. In terms of what is currently installed as equipment, um, you have for SOX control, you have a desox additive in the FCC or a wet cast scrubber. NOx, you can recall on an SNCR. P uh, particulate is dry ESPs or wet cast scrubbers. SO3 is a wet cast scrubber, CO, CO boilers, and aerosols are not controlled. So this is typically a very simplif simplified process flow chart downstream of the FCC, how the gas goes through the stack. You usually have a waste heat recovery boiler and then an ESP out to the stack. And this is for a unit that's hydro treated so that there's no sulfur dioxide in the gas. If you have sulfur dioxide, you go through a wet cast scrubber and then to the stack. Now, pre-treatment from FCC requires the same, but additional equipment. So in order to get to less than 1% dry, you need a higher efficiency scrubber. 
to get to NOx under control, you need SNCR or SCR with the sl ammonia slip controlled. Particularly to get to less than five, you need a dry SP or a wet cast scrubber, most likely a wet cast scrubber, plus a polishing filter. SO3, a wet cast scrubber, plus definitely a polishing filter. CO boiler and then aerosols, only a polishing filter will do. So again, going back to our previous flow chart, uh, it was very simple. Now, we had an, an SNCR, a CR, and an economizer because your SCR is derated to make sure, uh, this, so your waste, waste recovery ball is derated to make sure the right temp process temperature for the SCR. And then you have your, poli uh, your wet cast scrubber with a polishing section on it and a big cooling section. Now the subcooling is required because the temperature must be close to 38 degrees um, or as close to 38 degrees for efficient reaction in the, of the amine system. 38 degrees is difficult to get. You're usually going to be around 65 degrees coming out of, a, out of a scrubber, which is saturation. So you need about 25 degrees of subcooling, which is where the additional cooling comes in. Pressure drop, um, the carbon capture unit is going to add at least about 4 kp uh, AF pressure drop downstream. That has to be accounted for either by putting an ID fan on the downstream side or uh, increasing the flow gas uh, flow through the main gas blower. And then bypass provisions, because the carbon uh, CCU unit is not always available, you need to have a secondary stack available, and this uh, secondary stack has to be compliant with CPCP norms. So to close, um, we've talk, heard a lot from various speakers about carbon capture being required, how it is a mature technology. Uh, what I'd like to highlight today is that our equipment today in the refinery is not set up to even supply a carbon capture unit. There's a lot of work that goes into getting the flue gas ready before it can be sent to a carbon capture unit. Um, existing emission controls equipment on its own is not sufficient. There is no single one piece of equipment that will cure it. You need to group multiple pieces of equipment in series in order to meet your uh, inlet flue gas conditions for a carbon capture system. And it's essential that when planning new refineries or greenfield refineries or even expansion that the requirements for a future CCU plant be considered when designing your downstream equipment. Thank you.